Now let's try to solve the remaining sections of this problem, so part D and E. So in the last question, we've already proved that the expected value of distance is given by this expression over here. And then using this, we can use this to find the expected value of momentum. So the expected value of momentum is just, uh, by definition, taking the derivative. And another way to obtain the momentum, of course, is to use the momentum operator. So you're going to have the conjugate of the, of the wave function and then you apply the momentum operator and then you multiply by the wave function again and then if you calculate this expression you'll get the momentum but then as you can tell because our wave function itself is already kind of ugly in this problem this integral is going to get really messy so the fast way is to do it, is to use this definition directly so taking the derivative of this we, we can pull out the a over 2 at the front first so the one just goes away, and then we have these constants. And then for cosine, we use the, the chain rule. So cosine becomes negative sine. And then we multiply by 3 omega because of the chain rule. So the negative sign they cancel out. So this becomes 16. The 3s, they cancel out. So we're left with uh, 16 ma 3 pi square sine 3 omega t. And then there's also another omega over here, so don't forget about that. And then we call omega as we've defined in our previous video. This is just a shorthand for writing the for writing this expression here. So the first energy state divided by the reduced Planck constant. So let's just substitute the uh, actual expression here. So the first energy, the value of the first energy state is given by this. So it's proved in the book. And then we divide the extra reduced Planck constant. So one of the reduced Planck constants goes away, pi squares it goes away, one of the a's it goes away, 16 turns it to an 8, the m's they cancel out. So in the end you're left with, so let me just get rid of this. So in the end, uh, this final expression, this is going to be equal to 8 times the reduced Planck constant divided by 3a sine 3 omega t. So this is your answer to part D. So you can see that the expected value of momentum is a function of time. It's going to keep changing. So the expected value will be keep changing. Now for part E, we need to find the expected value of energy. So let's do just that. So uh, one way, of course, is again to use the uh, operator for, for uh, the energy. And that's going to result in a very complicated integral again. And another way to solve this is to use one of the formulas in the book. So in the book, it, it was proven that the expected value of energy is, can be given by this formula, where c is going to be the uh, the constant terms in front of the in front of each of the stationary states. So we call that for your complete wave function. It's going to look something like this. So you're going to have your constants. That's going to help you uh, satisfy your uh, your boundary conditions, and then you're going to have your x term, and then your and then your uh, term that's uh, dependent on t. So this is the entire wave function, what it looks like. And then it was proved in the book, so I'm not going to go over that again. That you can take this c, uh, the constant in the front, the cn, and then just square it. And this is going to be the probability that so cn is going to be the probability that the energy state is going to be at the nth energy state. So uh, moving back to our problem, we know that for our wave function, we only had uh, two values. We had c1 and c2, which were both equal to 1 over the square root of 2, which, we, we, which is what we proved in the previous videos. So in our case, we know that only two energy states are possible, the first one and the second one. And then each one of these have a probability of c1 square n, because they're the same. They're both going to be equal to 1 half, so we just square this. So that means the expected value of the energy is going to be 1 half times the first energy state plus 1 half times the second energy state. So to remind ourselves that the uh, formula for the energy state for infinite square well is equal to this. So we can substitute this directly into this formula here. So 2 becomes a 4 for 1 is just a 1. So if you add them up, you get a 5 pi squared uh, h bar squared. 
and then uh, there's a two at the bottom that there's also another one over two here due to the probability so the denominator becomes a four so this is your answer this is the expected value of energy